Hello people and welcome to the intersection marking tool for beginners tutorial. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. I feel like I'm at the point now where I'm comfortable enough with intersection marking tool uh, to talk through its interface and try and make it a little more understandable for you guys who have no idea how to use it. Just a little disclaimer, I am not a road engineer or any kind of civil engineer. I do not know the correct road markings. Every country will mark intersections differently. If you're after real world inspirations of how to mark intersections, then Google Earth, of course, is a great source of real world inspiration. But today I am just going to be talking you through the basics of the mod, what the interface is referring to and how we can make uh, some very base, simple intersections so you can go into your own game and practice with them. However, before we have a talk about intersection marking tool, I want to have a little chat about the node controller and how these two mods complement each other very well. So I have a very basic intersection here. This is a kind of six lane arterial that feeds off into a four lane vanilla road, a very common intersection in most of our cities. So we're going to come into a node controller. If you are not playing with the unified UI mod, you come into your road tools and then your kind of road mods like node controller, network multi tool will appear on this bar here under the road. If you're not playing with unified UI, if you are, then they will appear up here. So you want to select a node controller renewal. All of these mods will be linked down below as well. And then select this node right here. Okay, and this is going to change the interface for us a little bit. Greeted with four columns, one for all, and then a colored column, each referring to these nodes. So we have a red, which is here, a green, which is there, and a blue over here on the right. We have several options to apply to all or each of these nodes individually. You can use your mouse wheel to change these values just by scrolling up and down and you can also type in your keypad and hit enter and it will change it. So hitting offset for all will widen out the node entirely. Hitting offset for just one of them will widen out that particular colored node. Likewise for the green and likewise for the blue again. Same again with rotate, we can rotate all and you can see how the nodes will rotate like this, okay? Likewise with shift, it will shift all the nodes around that central node point, getting very messy. <laughs> and then we can stretch the node out as well. But this is all a little bit intimidating for what we need right now. If you make a mistake and you're like, oh my god, this is awful, there is a delete button up here at the top to reset the junction back to its default setting. And you can just do that. What I'm going to do here is come down into the all column. I'm going to change my offset to 30 meters for all of the junctions. I've just found 30 meters to be kind of a nice wide preset. And you're also speeding up at the traffic here as well. As the node is widened or offset here, at the right turn actually becomes quicker. So traffic will move faster through these widened nodes. This last row here for markings is referring to the markings. You can turn them on and off for all, or you can turn them on and off per intersection. It's just going to hide the pedestrian crossing here. It does not stop the functionality of crossing, it only hides it. However, for this particular junction, I'm going to hide all markings in the all column and also offset to 30 meters for everyone involved, which is going to give me an intersection that now looks a little bit like this. So the first thing you want to do before you do anything with intersection marking tool is actually just arrange uh, your turning lanes here, okay? So make this a dedicated right turning lane, uh, likewise over here as well. Uh, only turn left in the left lane and turn right in the right lane over here. Okay, so just dedicated turning lanes for the main road. Then we can come into intersection marking tool, which brings up a little box like this. We have headers across the top, which we'll cover each of these today as well and what they refer to. So we'll start out with points. And what a point is, is any of these called circles along the edges of the intersection. They are arranged per node here. You can see as we hover our mouse over them, they are highlighted. And opening the drop-down menu, we can then select each of these individual points. You don't really need to use this. I've still not used this screen. It just kind of highlights the points for you. You don't need to get to grips with the point screen just yet. Next thing we're going to come across to is lines. Okay, so this is currently empty because there are no lines on this intersection. So I'm going to draw across a line, okay? So I'm going to go from this blue node on the left here, and I'm going to draw it across to the orange node on the right. Now, as I draw my mouse over this new line on the left-hand list, you can see that it highlights very much that the points did, and that's going to be fine. We're also given some new options here as well, where we have a from and to point, which currently can't be changed. I'll explain how these work in a minute. 
We also have style, okay, which currently is solid. You can go to dashed, double solid, double dashed, and you can see this is all changing how this line appears here, okay? Get shark teeth, pavement, let's go to solid. You can change the color of the line by hitting this box down here, which brings up a classic color picker, all right? So you can just move this around and pick the color of your line if you want. You can also change the width of the line by changing this value down here for width with your mouse wheel, or you can type this in manually as well. So those are just a few of what the uh, controls are referring to. However, we haven't managed to cover a from and a two point because that currently can't happen because there's only one line. So now what I want to do is draw across from this bottom section here. I'm going to grab this orange node and I'm going to bring it up to the green one on the right turn lane. Okay. And a new line will appear in our list. So we can click back and two between these lines and change different things about them. However, what I want to do now is come back to the first line that we've drawn in that was drawn in from the blue point over to the orange point horizontally, this one right here. I can now change the from and two points because there is another line intersecting with this one here, right here, okay, where the two lines intersect. So now we have this intersecting line coming across from the bottom road. I can come back to my first line where I can now start applying rules into the line. So it's very important to understand that lines and rules are different things, okay? So the lines are appearing here on the left and they will appear every time we draw in a new line, okay? So there's a new one. You want to delete it, just come over to the X and then it'll disappear. And then this information here on the right in the box that has the from and two point, the style, the color and the width, this is what's called a rule, okay? So coming back to this first line that we drew from the blue point over to the orange point, I can now change the two point. You notice as I click this box, there are now three red dots that appear across the line. One at its start point, one at its end point, and any where another line intersects it. So if I want to say I only want this part of the line to run from here to here, that is where it will run from and to. So you can bring this straight across. As we check this new line that we've just drawn in, we can make its from point here and its to point there. You now see how it cuts off at that intersection, okay? However, I might want this line to carry on over to the intersection, but at a different pattern. So this is where a new rule comes into it, okay? Which you hit add a rule at the bottom here. And then a new box will appear on the right side here. This is exclusive to this line, okay? It's not going to affect any of the other ones. The other lines currently only have one rule at the minute. However, this first one now has two. But the second rule has nothing in it yet, okay? It doesn't have a from point and it doesn't have a to point. So I'm going to change the from point. I want it to run from here. And the to point is going to go to there. You now see how this dashed line now appears in the space where we've gone from and to. Because this is a new rule. And likewise, the same process applies to all the scrollables here. You can widen the width. You can change the dashed length. Uh, the space length. There's so much customizability involved with Inception Marking Tool. But this is how rules are going to work, okay? And as I hover over this first rule, you can see it highlights that part of the line that that rule applies to. As we come down to the second one, the second part of the line that this rule applies to will highlight. So really understanding how from and to points work is super helpful in cutting these intersections up and making different patterns and fillers which is what we'll have a look at now. So I'm going to delete all three of my current lines and then we'll talk about setting up some base intersection markings uh, using this initial premise that I've just talked about. So for me, anytime I'm setting up a wide intersection like this, I like to go left to right with every single one of my lines just so I can start to plan out some marked intersections. So let's do that together. Point to draw across all points And then the same with the corner points as well. So they're hugging uh, the curb or the sidewalk very tightly. And then the same again with our dedicated turning lanes. So this lane right here is going to come up into this one. And likewise, this lane right here is going to come down into this one. Also with this lane down here, 
it's going to curve up into there. And then also with this right turn lane, it's going to come down and into here. You will also notice that as I drag a point to a point, there are some shortcuts that appear to create a line. So rather than always having to come in and say, you know, I want a dash line here, you can preset this uh, just by following the shortcut. So if I wanted a dash line here, I could hold shift as I place the line and then it will come in as dashed. And there are a couple of different options for this here as well. So control and shift for a double solid, a double dash would be control, pave is alt. So you can change all of these shortcuts in the mod settings, come and find your intersection marking tool. And under shortcuts and modifiers, you can change um, all of these ones right here. So regular lines modifier, without a modifier, it will be solid. So you can change all of this, all right? I haven't really messed around with it just because I'm happy with the preset controls. But if you'd rather have something else as a preset, this is where it's all controlled under shortcuts and modifiers in the mod settings. So now we've kind of talked about lines and from and to points. And as we continue to mark out this intersection here today, you'll continue to see how from and to points uh, work with one another. I want to come ahead and have a little talk about crosswalks, which there are currently none of. And we can see as we're moving our cursor around with the intersection marking tool selected, uh, we have an option to create a crosswalk using shift. So if we hold shift, we notice that all of the points on the nodes now are changing shape and color. So I can now select a point to create or delete a crosswalk. So I'm going to select this one here and bring it across to there, which now draws in a crosswalk for me. And again, we'll see the crosswalk appear on the left and then its rules appear on this right hand screen. We can change many different things here, including the style. We can go for double zebra, and you can go for parallel lines. You can go for a solid color, of course, which can be changed using this uh, color picker again as well. You can go for a ladder. You can also change the width of this crosswalk alongside its offset from the median. And again, all of these values can be controlled uh, using the number pad and your mouse wheel as well. So you can customize your crosswalks exactly as you like them. However, there's something that you'll notice now that I've moved my crosswalk away from the median that there's lines going through it. And this looks very weird. In the intersection marking tool, there's three little dots in the top right here, okay? And there was an option at the bottom to cut lines by all crosswalks. You select this, it will remove all of the lines that go past the crosswalk so you don't get them cutting through like that. So if you're getting that happening, that's why. And that's the option to get rid of it, okay? So that's a crosswalk. You can do many different things with them. And likewise, if you want to delete it, you just hit the X and everyone's fine. So once you have all your lines in, uh, coming into Traffic Manager and then doing your lane connectors here uh, is an enormous help in kind of getting people to stick uh, to their chosen lanes, all right? Because they can sometimes just drive across your markings, which, as you would imagine, looks ridiculous. So once you have all your lines in, uh, we can now have a little chat about fillers. So as we are hovering around with intersection marking tool selected, uh, on our shortcut screen, it says that we can hold Alt to create a filler, which as we hold Alt, you will notice all of these red lines appear. And you will notice that they appear at every point where a line intersects with another line. Exactly how we did with the from and to points at the start, okay? So this is wonderful. This is very nice. So immediately, just as things are flowing, I can see that there's an opportunity for a filler in this block right here because no cars are ever going to pass through this space, okay? This is why it's helpful to see the cars moving. So holding Alt, I can create a filler. I'm going to click in one of these points. You can let go of Alt now. You don't need to hold it down. And then I'm going to start drawing in each of these red dots together. Very much like dot to dot, right? Then as we come back to complete it, the filler will turn green and then it will fill in, which again, back over on the intersection marking tool interface. Now we have a new filler on this list. Of course, as you add new fillers, they will start to pile up here. And then their rule is over here on the right side where we can change a number of things. We can have it as stripes. We can have it as solid. It can be chevrons. It can be raised pavement which I'm a huge fan of the raised pavement fillers. Um, I use these all the time, <laughs> like everywhere. For those following Ilos, you'll know I'm obsessed with these, all right? Um, you can change it to grass, okay? You can offset it from the lines and let it fill out a little bit. You can reduce the corner radius, which kind of curves it off. Again, so many options here. 
And really, the best way to kind of decide the filler for you is to just sit here and play with them and see what you think. So I'm a huge lover of the grass ones, but you know, take your pick of what you want your starred filler to be. So I can have a little island in the middle of my road here now, okay? There's no cars ever going to hit this. And everyone's staying within their lines and everyone's happy. Fantastic. I can also see another opportunity for a filler here that comes off of the median of the central reservation. Because again, there's no cars that are going to be driving here. So again, holding alt, I can click my first filler. I can then release alt and then connect these together to create a filler. So if I wanted this grass one here, rather than having to match all this up, what we can do is discuss the copy and paste functionality of intersection marking tool. Coming back to my first filler here, again, which as we hover over it on the left menu, highlights it where it is on the intersection. There is an option to copy the rule here. I can hit copy here. All right. This is a universal PC copy and paste symbol. Everyone knows what this means. Come back into your new filler that isn't stylized. And then you have an option here, paste. And you'll notice that it will take the exact parameters and presets of the original filler and apply it here. However, we can see that it's encroaching upon the median, right? That looks ridiculous. That looks insane. We don't want that. So we just want to change the offset from median. All right. Give it a little bit of room to breathe. And then you'll be fine there. So there's now a new filler in there as well. So just keep playing with fillers, okay? It might be a little bit over the top, and you know, there's maybe not that many fillers in a real life intersection, but you can certainly get to grips with the tool playing like this, okay? There's another opportunity here again as well. Okay, you know, there's no cars going to be driving in this little kind of triangle shape here. So I can bring in yet another filler. And again, I don't want to have to restylize it all. I can just hit paste and that's going to come in. But again, I'm near the median. So I want to reduce the offset from the median. Probably what's about there. That's going to be great. So now I might want to copy this new style because I know I'm going to mimic it over here. Again, creating another filler. Now I can paste this in. And then just change my offset from the median. With a little bit of curb size. So you can now just see how you're going to start chiseling out these really nicely designed intersections, okay? And there's various different things and that we can do with them. So now I'm starting to construct my intersection, I might want to start making a few of these lines dashed, uh, very much like they are on the main road, so it carries on that pattern, okay? So I'm going to come back into one of these uh, horizontal lines that runs from left to right. Let's go ahead and find one. There we go. And then I'm going to change this to dashed, all right? I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so I can start to match it up somewhat similar with the pattern that's on the uh, main road. So again, I can see it's a much uh, kind of brighter shade of white, so I'm going to change that color there as well. You can also see that the uh, space length in between the dashes is uh, slightly larger on the main road than it is in the intersection. So I'm going to change space in between the lengths. I think I'm relatively happy with that. All right. So that line is going to change and the exact same thing applies here. I can copy the rule of that line by hitting the copy icon in the top here. Coming down to another one of those horizontal lines. And then hitting paste. And boom, the exact same stylized dash line will now appear here as well. And I'm also going to want to repeat this for those bottom roads too. So again, I'm just going to hit paste. Same again on this one. So we can already now start to see our intersection coming to life a little bit more. We're starting to get to grips with fillers. And we're copying and pasting rules between lines and fillers as well. So we don't have to keep stylizing every single individual line. All right, cool. So now there's a good opportunity uh, to talk about from and two points again, now that we're seeing these fillers come in and there's some kind of empty rough lines uh, being left here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come ahead and find this curve line here now, okay? The one that connects the lines from the orange node up to the green. Again, which can be done just by hovering our cursor over our list of lines. And we'll now change this. So I want my from point to be here and the two point to end at the filler, which is going to remove that line now. Okay, so the line is still here. You can see where it is, but it's from and two point is now only from here to here. 
So that's where this rule for this line will apply. If I want this line to continue, I need to add in a new rule. And then maybe from this point to this point, it's going to go as double dashed. Okay. If I wanted to maintain the same dash line from earlier, I can paste that style in again as well. And then it will appear here. Also want to do the same for the other line too. Okay. So I'm going to come into this one and your from point is going to be here and your to point is going to be there, which means you'll stop. And then I want to add a new rule on the same line that runs from this point up to here. And I might paste that in again. Okay. So you can now start to see how you chisel out these lines using from and two points to change the rules and how the line looks and appears as it moves across the intersection. It does take a little bit of getting used to. You're not going to come in and create this amazing six way island interchange for the first time using this mod. It does take some kind of really just getting used to. <laughs> it's uh, certainly one of the more complicated mods, I think. Right. So it should be noted as well. That when you do copy um, a rule, that it's from and two points are not copied. They are standalone. The only thing that is copied is the, the style of the line, the color, and the width of it. I can see I also want to do the same thing uh, with these lines over here now. So I'm going to go ahead and find those two. There we go. There's one of them. And your from point, uh, you're just going to run from here to there. Now I want to add a new rule that runs from here up to there. I'm going to paste that style in again. And you'll see it's just going to paste over the style that we've had copied. I'm going to do exactly the same to this one too. You will run from here up to here. And then again, I'm going to add a new rule where you will run from here to here with my stylized pattern. And I can paste that in. We're going to have two little dash lines that now kind of mold in and around all these island fillers. Okay. Not too bad. If you don't want the dashes up and against the island, of course, this is where you can just uh, change uh, your two point. You know, let's go back to that other line there. Let's go for this node. So if I wanted it to stop there, then I can do. Right. If I wanted it to carry on all the way there, then I can. So all about playing different ideas again google earth is an enormous help for these uh, and actually in real life they tend to be fairly simplified i think it's just the excitement of having kind of essentially intersection porn in city skylines that allows us to get this excited about marking out these intersections using this mod so now there's some other observations that i can have a look at i'm seeing opportunities for perhaps these lines here to be uh, double lines to indicate people that they might have to stop Okay, so let's go and find that horizontal line. We'll be on our list somewhere. You just have to keep scrolling up and down. There it is. So again, I'm going to say you will start here and you will end here with your regular rule, which is the straight line. Okay. However, I want a new rule that goes from here to here. And I want this to be uh, double solid. Okay. Again, you can change offsets and widths and everything else here. Okay. All the other fillers, you can change center, left, and right. All right. I also want a new rule to carry on over here to the end of the line now, where it's going to carry on as a single line. So we can see now how we can customize little sections of certain lines to just function a little bit differently and look a little bit differently as well, you know? So there's various different ideas and kind of templates that you can get on board with when working with the intersection marking tool like this. And then of course, once you have Trianarchy, um, everyone will be playing with Trianarchy at this point, I'm assuming. Uh, you can start to decorate uh, these islands if you want using kind of weeds and grass and uh, trees, you know, all your usual little favorite detailing palettes you can come in with, you know, taller palms if you want and you know start decorating out these intersections. And really bringing uh, a lot more personality uh, into your road network is something that I find uh, this does uh, quite effectively. Again, if you're finding that Sims, uh, <laughs> like this guy right here, where are you going? <laughs> your Sims will freak out a little bit, right? Uh, but your 
Lane Connectors here from Traffic Manager are an enormous help in making sure that the sims don't just do whatever the hell they want, right? Because sometimes they will. The Traffic Manager also pairs very nicely with the intersection marking tool as well, in case you were wondering. Okay, so we'll come back in now. And again, it's just a case of identifying uh, spots for fillers, if that's what you want to do. Um, again, I can see another one uh, right here where I can bring in another island filler. I can paste the style in, as I know it's exactly the same as all my other grass um, fillers. Do exactly the same over here. Because I know that these spaces are not marked out to be driven on. All right. So hopefully now you can just kind of get a concept of how you start to cut up an intersection. Once you have all those horizontal lines in, it does take a bit of getting used to. It's not something you're going to nail first time, but it's really not that complicated. Again, with these wider roads, I can see that there's more opportunity for filler to come in in these spaces. You might want to make this perhaps some stripes, okay? You can change the colour of them. You go for some bright orange stripes if you want, or you know, do what you like with them. Get creative and look at Google Earth. I can see that there's an exact opportunity for the same filler to also repeat on this side as well. Again, I don't want to have to redesign it all, so I can come back into that filler, copy its design, come over to the new one, and paste it in. This copy and paste function also works with the entire intersection, which are these two copy and paste functions up there. So say for example, I am happy with this as like my standard marked up three-way intersection. All my markings are fine, my fillers are okay, everyone's happy. I can copy the entire intersection by hitting this button here. I can then just very temporarily recreate this intersection over here. So say you know you have another four-way intersection. You're like, oh, I need to get this right. Do your node controller first. Let's set up the uh, 30 meter offset that we did at the start uh, with no markings. Come into intersection marking tool, select the new intersection. Then you're gonna hit the paste function, which will throw it in all the wrong way around. There is a couple of options up here at the top to rotate your markings and you'll see as you find the right rotation, everything falls into place. Hit apply and you will be fine. Bearing in mind, you will still have to come back in with traffic manager and reset up your lane connectors and also do uh, your dedicated turning lanes here as well. Uh, just so you know, Sims aren't driving across your markings because they will. And everyone will point it out in your YouTube comment section, <laughs> which, which keeps happening to me. So yeah, it's important that you do uh, your lane markings and node controller before copying. But that's how easy it is. You know, once you have a three-way intersection designed, you can use it across the entire city as many times as you want just by copying and pasting things in. So it's super handy. It really is a great little mod. So now we will have a little chat about templates and presets. Say I'm going to come across to one of my fillers, right? And I absolutely love the impact that this small little island has given me here. I'm going to hit this button here for saving as a template. And we're going to call it Sexy Island because it's so good. I'm going to save that, right? And it's now saved as a template under our templates folder. It will auto sort them between fillers, lines and crosswalks. So don't need to worry about that. So we've just saved a template filler. That's wonderful. Okay, so come back into my filler now. Delete this one and see, you know, I'm coming back to another intersection. I need to uh, fill in this island here. And I'm like, oh man, I wish I had a quick and easy template to apply to this one. I can come into apply template, select sexy island, and then sexy island will appear back in there. This is a slightly longer winded version of just doing copy and paste for this filler, but it will save them in your templates here. If you go, you can do the same for lines, crosswalk. So again, say for example, you know, I am thoroughly in love with this little dash line. This is the dash line for me. I'm going to save it as a template. We're going to call it sexy line. I'm going to hit plus. It's going to organize it into regular lines. And then again, every time I come back in and draw in a new line now, I can just very temporarily delete this one. Draw it back in. It comes in as the default. I can hit apply template give it sexy line, and then it comes back in like that as well. You can also come into presets, which will currently be empty, but there's a button up here to save the junction as a preset. So you'll get a little screenshot of the 
uh, in section here. Save it as something you'll recognize. Again, three-way island in this section is something pretty common. And then it'll appear under your presets option. You can come in and uh, delete this entire node marking. Go into presets, grab your three-way island in section. Hit apply and then it will come straight back in. So templates for individual elements of the intersection and presets for the entire intersection is what those two functions are referring to makes it extremely easy uh, to copy and paste in sections around the city once you've got a couple of different designs. For those of you that have been following ILOS, uh, you will see uh, several of our marked intersections that have been around the city, such as this bowtie intersection here. Uh, again, I'll leave these linked down below if you want to come and see uh, how we construct them. And again, using node controller to widen the nodes out here. And very simple premise, you know, let's uh, have a little look at this one, shall we? So let's come into our lines. So this line right here, it's going to run as a solid for its first rule. And then as it reaches a certain point, it moves into this little dashed one over here. Okay. And the likewise with the other lines as well on their rule, they run as solid up until a point and then their rule changes as they move into dashed. So you'll get an impression. You see, I've just scrolled that on there. They are prone to scroll as well. So just be careful with that. So you'll really just get an impression of playing with Insection Marking Tool and watching people play with it as to how it behaves. It looks like an incredibly complicated mod, but it really isn't. It's just getting used to what each of those menu items refers to. You can start developing kind of, you know, three-way island uh, intersections like this. You can come into some smaller roundabout designs with some very basic fillers and some shark teeth. Okay, really simple. And then you can even mark up your highway intersections as well with islands and more fillers and lots of different things in between so if you're interested in seeing kind of all these different types of designs applied in many different situations because there's too many to cover in one tutorial you can literally use this mod any way you like uh, then do come ahead and follow our ilos series uh, we do talk about insertion marking tool and use it quite a bit as well uh, but otherwise i hope that that is a uh, simple and easy way of following the inception marking tool. I hope I've explained everything uh, somewhat sensibly here as to how the rules behave with the from and to points and changing styles and copy and pasting and covering fillers and crosswalks and templates and presets. Honestly, the first time you open this mod, it's intimidating as hell. It's there's so much to look at, so many numbers, and it's probably the most intimidating mod interface outside of something like procedural objects or something like that, I think. Otherwise, I will shut up and leave it there. Uh, if you've enjoyed the tutorial, a like, comment, and share below really helps me out. Uh, even much if you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. If you do have any questions, please leave them down below. I will respond to as many of them as I can and try and help you out if you're having problems uh, getting your head around in section marking tool for the first time. Definitely one of the more complicated mods, but probably one of the most fun as well. I am obsessed with Insection Marking Tool. <laughs> it's so good. But definitely download uh, Node Controller and Traffic Manager to go with it as well. But I'm pretty sure 2022 City Skylines, most PC players are playing with these mods at this point. But if not, I hope it serves as a nice kind of introduction for you. Otherwise, I will shut up and I will leave it there. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, enjoy the rest of your day.